All right, so you Tim, what we're looking at today is um, obviously the construction of your mousetrap racer. Now this is an example of a mousetrap racer. This is what yours will look something off. It'll be a little bit different to this. Obviously, um, you've got different materials, but essentially we're looking for the same sort of thing. Okay, you're looking for a racer that's propelled primarily through a mousetrap. The materials you've received, um, I'll run through those in a second, but we want this sort of design, okay? where you've got small front wheels, large back wheels. The mouse trap, when it propels itself forward, needs to spin the wheels forward, okay? Be very clear of that. There's a few common um, errors we're gonna talk about soon. Obviously, we haven't got wood, we've got CDs, but you feel free to do whatever you'd like. You don't have to use the materials we've given you, but these are some of the materials you've got. Um, uh, this is the sort of thing you were doing with the materials you've got. Now, let's talk about your mouse trap and some of the common common problems we see. Okay, so you've been given a couple of blocks here, and I'll hold this up actually. You've been given a couple of blocks, and these can form the base of your mouse eraser. Feel free to use these, you can have them separated, you can have them closed, but those are the, that's the purpose of the blocks. Um, to ensure that you've got something to build off, if you want to use those, you can use, there's plenty of other things you can use, you can destroy, you can do whatever you like. Okay, these make the, the these can be used for axles. The little ones can be used for axles for your wheels. The big ones are for uh, joining things, or you can use it for lever arms. They're up to you. The CDs need to be your back wheels, okay, not your front wheels. So you can use something else for your, your back wheels if you'd like, and use as your front wheel. But if you're going to use this kit, the CDs must be your back wheel. Okay, you've got a bunch of You've got bottle caps and small wheels at the front. You can use those as you see fit. I don't want to give too much away. You've got nails, you've got washers, little um, foam washers, some string, a mouse trap, and some tape. Okay. Now again, you do not need to use this stuff. You can if you'd like, but you don't need to use this stuff. Obviously, when you're using the mouse trap, one of the things you need to be aware of is keeping it go, particularly when there's no rope or tension on the rope, but even when there is, it's a good idea to um, to remove that. If you would like to set the mouse trap, okay, every time, then what you need to do is hold, well, probably don't do it like I'm doing it, do it the same not as I do. It's very delicate, but you put it through that ring, that long lever is what places the mouse trap in that position. Now, when we let go of this mouse trap, it needs to drive our car forward. So I'm going to talk about some of the things that we commonly find students do not do properly. So let's say this is my mousetrap racer. One of the most common errors we see is axle placement, okay? You need to be really clear about where your mousetrap is and how it can assess your ax how it can access your axles. If your mousetrap is on the top of this, if you put your axle on the bottom, you need to think about how can a string get to that and drive it forward. So you need to be really clear with where you're placing your axles. Okay. The mouse trap placement. If your back axle is here, okay, if you've got your back axle set up like so, then you need to be very clear about where your mouse trap is heading. Which way is the moment arm swinging so it drives, spins this forward? You be very clear and very um, thoughtful in where you're placing it and why you're placing it in certain spots. Securing the string to the axle, so obviously you're going to use your string to connect your mouse trap to your, to your axle of your, um, to, the, to the axle of the back wheel. You need to ensure that there's a way that you can make it so that when you spin, when you uh, drive that mouse trap forward, it spins the axle. Sometimes people have set knots up that don't actually grip the axle, so it just free spins. You need to be really, really clear with that. That's a common problem. CDs in motion, so sometimes because their CDs are rather flimsy and thin. If we don't secure them properly to our back axle, they will spin freely and won't actually drive forward and there'll be too much wobble. So you be really clear about where you're setting your CDs and how you're going to secure them so they move in a consistent um, direction so you get good data. And the last one's too much friction. You might want to put your um, CDs or your wheels pretty close to your body of your mousetrap. Be aware if they're too close and they're too tight and they're actually physically hugging the mousetrap racer, the body of the mousetrap racer, then you're unlikely to get a lot of motion. 
So these are the common problems we see in the construction of the mousetrap racer. Again, it's up to you. You can look up designs, you can do whatever you like. It is up to you how you collect data. The mousetrap racer does not need to be perfect. Obviously, the, the better it is, the more you'll get out of it. But it doesn't need to be perfect. You don't get assessed on the quality of your mouse racer, you get assessed on the quality of your data that you can get from your mouse racer. So issues like friction and not being able to get it to go forward are much, much bigger problems um, than having a, a mouse racer that isn't pretty and doesn't do the, do the job. So you need to make sure that your, your mouse racer goes, okay, and you've thought about these things so you're not wasting time in the construction of your mouse racer. Just, just be aware, axle placement, mouse trap placement, Securing the string, CD motion, so wobbling of the CDs as you go, the too much friction. Hopefully you can get through this in one go and you don't have to redo anything because you've measured twice, cut once. That's a good philosophy to have in this. So we'll talk about how we're going to assess that from there.